five-year sabbatical with Sun Microsoft in 1991. Upon his return to emphasis in 1997, he established and headed the internet consultancy practice. In June 2007, Shubulal took over the company's chief operating officer after having served in several leadership roles within the company. He received a master's degree in physics from the University of Kerala and a master's degree in computer science from the University of Boston, US. He is a member of the Seoul International Business Advisory Council, the International Board of Foundation, Globethics.net, the Global Corporate Governance Forum's Private Sector Advisory Group, the International Advisory Board, Boston University, and the Metropolitan College Dean's Advisory Board, Boston University. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Welcome on stage, Mr. S.D. Shibulal. It's um, a great pleasure for me to be here. So when I got this invite um, and I was coming in, I was thinking about um, something which happened about 10 years back. 10 years back, I had the privilege of meeting um, Stephen Hawking, the famous uh, physicist. He was visiting India in 99, and uh, I had the privilege of having a dinner with him in, in Bombay. I'm sure all of you have heard about him. Uh, he's a very, very eminent physicist. And um, he is completely paralyzed, totally paralyzed. Uh, there are only two parts of his body which work. One is his brain, second is his two fingers. He can't even chew, he cannot even chew his food. His food has to be fed after um, pulping it. So I was sitting next to him and I was asking him how things are and he said, uh, things are looking very good. Um, you know, he's a very extremely positive man. And he said, things are looking very good. And I asked, asked how come? He said, look, I live in, 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 um, in, uh, in the technology world. All my life is supported by technology. And just then, about a month back, the, the new computer was fitted onto his, um, his chair. He sits in a chair, and it has its own computer and a screen. So he cannot talk. He is not speaking to me. He is actually typing, typing it in. And I am reading it on the screen. And he told me that things are looking very good, because Microsoft and Intel together has installed this new, brand new computer. And uh, that has made my life very easy. So he said, you know, I should summarize by saying that Intel inside. It was not, a, it was not an endorsement for Intel, but it was, um, you know, he was he's pointing out that his quality of life, the quality of his life has improved because of all the great work people, all of you do. So I thought it was a good um, thing to mention um, today. So. <clears throat> we live in a world where we cannot imagine um, a situation where semiconductors are not there. Today morning when I woke up, my alarm clock went on, powered by a semiconductor. I opened my iPad, another semiconductor chip. I listened to music, made a phone call. Everything, um, whether it is iPad or iPhone or anything, is done through semiconductors today. And um, of course, it is also true in banking, in healthcare, in every single industry which we, um, which we are in. So in a sense, um, the semiconductor industry and your industry influences every single aspect of our life today. Interestingly enough, we at Infosys in the last couple of years has been looking at where should we invest going forward? Of course, we are not in, in the manufacturing segment. We are in the, in the software, in the software side of the, our business. And when we looked at global drivers, which are driving our clients, right? We were looking at the global growth drivers, which will influence the behavior of our clients. We identified some seven teams. We call them the global drivers for our clients. And three of them are heavily related with the, with the semiconductor industry. 
first one we identified was the digital consumer the new consumer behavior second one was about new commerce it is about mobility it is about inclusivity it is about mobile commerce and the last one or the third one was about pervasive computing and all these three themes are heavily reliant on the innovations which are coming from this one one industry so um, that shows uh, the importance of this industry not only for us for the for our for our clients now if you look at the the global picture by um, 2050 we will be about 9 billion people and that is approximately 30% more than what it is today so the world population will grow about 30% in the next um, 40 years and there are tremendous challenges in various basic infrastructure aspects right if you look at india for example if you take one single basic service in india the healthcare 80% of our doctors are in urban areas and 70% of our population is in the rural areas right so the humanity as a whole is going to face serious challenges in the basic services like education healthcare sustainability and i clearly believe that these are areas where your industry will play a very key role in the in the coming future now there are many examples i can talk about in fact um, coming into this meeting i was um, reading a newspaper article in bbc and they were talking about a new blood pressure blood pressure medicine blood pressure um meter which is similar to a watch they are saying that instead of having the big machine now you can have a watch which you attach to your wrist and it will monitor the blood pressure continuously and of course you hook it up to a computer it will download the data and do a full analysis of your health so every innovation which will impact every one of these segments whether it is healthcare whether it is sustainability whether it is um, education are going to come from from your industry so in a sense you are not only really driving innovation and entrepreneurship you are actually driving quality of life you are contributing tremendously towards the quality of life and the quality of life across all these all these basic um, services now when we look at um, when and so that is why you know these kinds of events are very very important these events give us an opportunities to discuss where we are what are the kind of innovations we should drive how we can add value to the to the future of not only our industry but to humanity itself of course the opportunities are global because the entire world is um, is hungry for um, new technology but for the purpose of today's um, today's discussion i thought we will limit it to the emerging markets and specifically to um, to asia and to india if you look at the world manufacturing uh, my understanding is that 55% of the ma manufacturing happens in asia and uh, that is minus japan if you add brazil and russia you are talking about almost 60% of the manufacturing but when you look at india it is a completely different story right because we really don't manufacture chips at this point in time we do not have an industrial strength fab in in india at this point in time but our industry is still very very strong we are a classical emerging market country india is a very classical emerging market country and just like any other emerging markets we provide three important um, opportunities to every industry not only us every industry in the world and i clearly believe that these three opportunities are important to know it is important to leverage for the growth of the industry and um, for the for creating innovation and entrepreneurship 
The first one is, of course, about growth, right? Now, this market, if you look at it, um, the Indian market is growing at a GDP level of something like 8.5 to 9 percent, right? The global revenue has gone up in India from approximately 255 billion in 2008 to about 304 billion by 2010. Now, the Indian growth, Indian semiconductor industry will probably be about $9 billion, maybe in, uh, in 2011. So there's a very, very strong market in India, and it is growing pretty much at um, industry-leading uh, industry uh, growth rate. Now, our consumer market today is about $29 billion. And in 2011, it is predicted to be about $50 billion by 2015. We are talking about devices. We are talking about computing devices. We are talking about mobile handsets. We are talking about uh, audio video products. Computers will probably contribute about 33% of the revenue. And mobile, maybe another 33%. But we are looking at overall growth. Now, the important thing is to, at, to attract a market, to grow in a market like India, the traditional approaches are not enough. This is a market where you have to have local products. I, one single example comes to my mind. Nokia, for example, created the $20 phone and sold how many millions? So the, Emerging markets are markets of, in a sense, contradictions. The products which are sold in the developed countries are not usually applicable in the emerging countries. So if you want to leverage the growth market in India or in any other emerging country, you have to create products which are relevant to these markets. So that brings me to the second point. What, are the, what, is the, what is the important, uh, what is the second most important aspect of a country like India or, a, on a, or an emerging country? And especially for a country like India, I clearly believe that we are moving from a phase of execution to a phase of innovation. See, if you look at the IT industry, if you look at any other industry in India, our success so far has been in execution. We have executed extremely well. We have learned from the developed countries, we have learned from the world, and we have executed extremely well. But I clearly believe that we are moving towards the next phase, which is innovation and entrepreneurship. So there is tremendous opportunity for us to create innovation, which is very relevant to our own markets in the coming future. There are many, many examples. In fact, I was just, um, before coming in here, I was talking to Rohit, who is my colleague, who just acquired a nano, and he was telling me that it is an excellent car. Look at what they have done. They have created a product for our market. Not only it is a new product, but it is a new process. They have created a new process to create a product for this market. That is why they are able to do it at $2,500. So when you talk about $35 PC or $35 slate, it doesn't matter. Maybe it is at $100. But it is not about creating a product of bad quality. It is about creating a new process, new <coughs> engineering process, which will create a product which is relevant to these markets. And why do I believe that innovation is going to be the future? Because the ecosystem is slowly getting built. We have an excellent education system in place. We have people investing into R&D in this country. There are many, many multinationals today doing R&D work in, in this country. We are filing more and more patents today. So all the ecosystem which are required to create innovation, which are required to create uh, new products, and new products which are relevant to this market is, is coming together. And I clearly believe that that is going to be the second largest opportunity for our industry in India and also in the emerging markets. 
I of course already see many instances of this. For example, G is creating a uh, G is creating an ECG machine which will allow you to do an ECG for one dollar. That is because if it is more than a dollar, most of our country cannot afford it. But remember, it will only take a couple of years at most before the same product is sold in other parts of the world. 